Hey, uh, Chris here from Production Coaching Civil Earthworks. Uh, today I'd like to share a, a bit of a, a short video and some life lessons and experiences that I've had um, recently when working in a fill area and just experiencing watching um, a certain operator that had good skills in a pushing machine, it was a compactor, and um, just how he reacted with um, uh, truck drivers and some, a couple of truck drivers that were a little bit green in the industry. And just how that impacted his day and um, just different scenarios on how I actually operate and how I've, I've witnessed a lot of other people operate and just how they can um, improve the scenarios when working in a fill area with um, a multitude of truck operators, whether that with different experience levels as well. So and, and the main thing is to just get things and keep things moving smoothly um, as a team, in, a, in a team environment when you're working with um, other machines coming into the area. So in this life lesson that I wanted to roughly discuss, we'll, we'll just have the down view on this. So we're looking down on a fill area. But in the experience that I had, I had a uh, we had a compact uh, operator that could operate the machine quite well. But when it came to a couple of um, truck operators that were a little bit green, the um, comp compactor operator would, would lose his cool just a little bit. I even witnessed him throwing his helmet around in the cab. So, that whole lot of me straight up, he, um, he, was, he was also struggling to communicate with the uh, truck operators on where he wanted material and how he, how he wanted to do it. So it impacted his day greatly and it, it destroyed his day a little bit. And then some of the communication he had with the truck, truck operators was a little bit negative too. So that also impacted their day. So the one thing I wanted to really share and highlight on this is when you're actually in the pushing machine, there is that responsibility of yourself to try your best to actually help these guys out in, in, in a certain way where they're coming in and they're actually confident and comfortable with um, how you normally operate. So the, the case before with this uh, other operator, he was doing different things. So there was no flow, there was no real rhythm of what he was doing. He would, he would put a load over here at one stage and then he would put something over here at the next stage. It wasn't consistent. So when I operate, I do my very best. So let's say in this scenario, we, with this scenario, we're, we're quite lucky. So we've got a big open area and we've got uh, no obstacles because every feels different and you have to, it, it works differently. But in this case, we're running a big fill, plenty of room, and we're gonna work left or right. And if you can, in these big areas, just always try to work to that left or right because if you've got, 10 operators coming at you, tipping off, you'd be surprised, they actually start really working out how you actually operate. And they will be, they could be half a kilometre away and see where you're working, and they'll have a bit of an idea on which direction they're gonna be coming on the field. So in this case here, let's say the, uh, this truck operator and all the flow of the truck operators are able to come in from behind on the field, and they come in and they're coming off to tip off. So in this down view, you can see here, let's just say we've had a few loads here put already because we're working left to right. And this uh, dozer operator has already pushed it out. This is, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to draw this properly, but what we got here is something that I do, I try to do very much because it's a good indication of where you'd like the next load roughly to be tipped. So just say hypothetically, that was a previous load that's been tipped off by a truck. That operator's gone. So what you do, you kind of corner tip this this uh, pile here, and you leave a bit of a you leave a bit of a left over, because you know if you're working left or right, this operator's coming in. He or she should or should and can and will um, have the ability to actually learn that their load is wanted there. They're not going to come in, or some do unfortunately, but this is what we want to coach and teach them. So. They got a bit of an idea go, ah, yes, I want the operator of this dozer wants it there next. They're not gonna come in and wanna tip you on the far right because they'll have a bit of an understanding that they just wanted to work left or right, bit of a flow. So I found that really does help in a lot of cases and especially when you actually have the opportunity to talk to the operators and give them a bit of an understanding that that's, um, that's where you want the next load. Um, in this case here, I think I've I think I've covered in another couple of videos about roughly about on the tip area, always trying to tip on the higher ground, 
you wouldn't want to come in and tip your load here because you'd have a gaping big hole here for the operator and this operator wouldn't like it either so I've covered that in a couple of other videos I've done but yes just um, yeah just a short short video on just roughly where I think flow and if you have the opportunity to work to a certain rhythm and actually keep to it you're actually going to have um, a better opportunity and better chances of um, having uh, less negative impact with uh, truck, op truck operators tipping in the wrong area. That being said, every operator is different and every truck operator is different. Some will pick up what is going to happen in a fill area and some never really do, but they roughly get an idea on if you're working left or right, it's not rocket science and they should pick it up. So I just want to share that short one there because there's no point in losing your cool, throwing your helmet around the cab if you're potentially not doing that little bit more to try to put things into a rhythm to get these guys, um, these guys and girls operating smoother for you so you can actually belt out those loads on your lift and you're not having a lineup of trucks behind you because you're having to double handle stuff or you're having to communicate a great deal on the radio because the truck operator is unsure of what you're actually trying to achieve. So just a short video on just um, things that I like to do. Just roughly just one scenario in a multitude of different things you can do, but just leaving that small piece of um, material there if you're in a cushion machine can actually help a deal. Um, <coughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thanks for your time. Hopefully this has been beneficial and um, uh, feel free to comment.